What's going on engineers? So I've been working a lot into WebAssembly lately, so I wanted to make a video and show you how you can get started with WebAssembly and Rust fast. So before we jump in and create a really basic example with WebAssembly and Rust, it's probably worthwhile to first examine why WebAssembly even needs to exist and what it actually is specifically. So as far as what WebAssembly is, WebAssembly can be thought of as a type of bytecode that can be generated from a variety of languages. That bytecode can then be compiled by the browser and ran natively at native speed. The reason this is so significant is because prior to WebAssembly, the only thing that could run in the browser is JavaScript. That means that anything you want to run in the browser either has to be written by JavaScript or written by something that transpiles to JavaScript, such as like TypeScript, CoffeeScript, and a litany of other languages. And for the variety of projects out there, JavaScript is perfectly well suited to handle their problems. But as more and more applications begin to work in the browser as the platform of choice, the need for speed and the need for resources continues to grow. Now I want to be clear, WebAssembly is not intended to replace JavaScript. It's intended to work well alongside JavaScript. And one such way it can work alongside JavaScript, and it's the example we're going to use today, is allowing developers writing in JavaScript to offload computationally expensive tasks to something that's written in another language and compiled to WebAssembly. So with that, let's jump in and do exactly that. So there's a number of languages that can generate WebAssembly, such as Go, Rust, C, C++, and other languages. As you probably saw in the title, we'll be using Rust in this video. If I make future videos on the topic of WebAssembly, I'll likely also use Rust. So the first step is we have to create a new Rust library project. So to do that, we'll do cargo init. We'll specify a name such as wasm test, and we'll do dash dash lib to say it's a library. This will create us a few things. It'll give us a cargo.tomo file, a source directory, and a lib.rs. It's going to pre-fill some code in our file here. We don't need any of it, so we'll simply just delete it. Before we actually write any code, we'll have to add a couple things to our cargo.tomo file. We'll need to write an entry into lib, create type, cdy lib, and also one dependency, wasm-bingen. The wasm-bingen package has two primary purposes. The first is that it allows you to export functions to JavaScript, and the second is it allows you to access JavaScript functions in Rust. For this video, we're only interested in the exporting functions to JavaScript part. So the first one we need to add is a simple import. It's going to be use wasm underscore bind gen colon colon prelude colon colon star. And that will import everything that we need to create the library. It's at this point that we'd create our functions that we want to export to JavaScript. So for our example, we're going to create a really basic function that just takes in two numbers and then adds them together and returns the results. So we can write that out quick. Create a new function, pub function, we'll call it add. It'll take in argument one will be n1, which is a 32-bit integer, n2, which is a 32-bit integer. It will return a 32-bit integer. And then our code is simply n1 plus n2. Now, functions that we make are not automatically exported. To actually say that we want to export this function, we have to use an attribute. So we'll do pound sign brackets wasm underscore bind gen. And that's it. We're actually done. The Rust portion of this is complete, and we're ready to export this to JavaScript. Now, as far as getting this into JavaScript, there is a manual way you can do it, but the most common way I've seen at the time of this recording is to use a tool called WasmPack. This is a third-party library, which we can get really quick simply by doing cargo install wasm-pack. Of course, I already have it installed, so it didn't do anything, but if I didn't, it would go ahead and install it. To actually build our wasm file, it's as simple as just doing wasm-pack build. It'll go through a number of things. And once it completes, it'll have created a new directory called pkg, which will contain all the files necessary to import it into your JavaScript project. And we'll just go into that folder and we'll see what's there. Since we're not using TypeScript, we can ignore the one to the .ts extension, but there's a couple other files of interest here. Of course, there's the wasm file. That's going to be the compiled version of the Rust code that we just wrote. And there's also wasmtest.js, which will allow you to import the stuff into your JavaScript project. But because wasmpack has everything structured as a module and it makes a package.json file which describes the files that are part of the module, and because we're using webpack to build everything, we'll actually be able to just reference the folder pkg, and that'll be all we'll have to do. So now that we're done with Rust and we're done with building our wasm file, we're actually able to just make our simple JavaScript project to make use of this stuff. Which brings us to our next topic of webpack. Since a lot of people watching today are probably using Webpack for their project, that's why I decided to use that one. You don't have to use it, it's not strictly required, and other bundlers will work, it's just the process will be slightly different, but it'll be mostly the same. So we will need to install Webpack, that's as easy as making a package.json file, importing our dependencies, Webpack and Webpack CLI, coming to our terminal, and doing npm install. After that's done, Webpack will be ready to go. 
Before we start running our JavaScript project, we'll need a very small Webpack configuration file, which we'll make at webpack.config.js. That configuration will look like this. This configuration is very simple. For those that already use Webpack, we'll recognize all this right away. But for those that don't, we'll talk about this a little bit. So it's saying operate in development mode. It's saying that the entry point to your application is going to be located at index.js. So we'll be making an index.js file shortly to say that once the module is imported, it should run this file. And then the last four lines are just where should it output the bundle JavaScript. So this just says create a new folder called dist and in that folder put a bundle.js file. So we'll move on now to actually create that index.js entry point file. Now currently WebAssembly files have to be loaded asynchronously and compiled by the browser. So we have two options. We can either load the module synchronously and then request the WASM file asynchronously or we can simply load the entire module asynchronously. So for our entry point, all we're going to write is a single line. It's going to be import, and then we're going to import a file called init.js, which we're going to create here in a second. The first line in our init file is going to be where we actually import all of the exported functions. So we'll do this by export all as, and then we'll specify some alias. I'm just going to call it wasm from dot slash package. Now the reason this works is because the WASM pack tool generated us a legitimate module to use. And this is why we can import this so simply. And then finally, we can actually use our export function now. So we can do something like let result equals wasm.add. Now keep in mind, this is the add function from our Rust code. We specify two numbers, say like two and eight, and then we'll just console.log the result. And finally, it's time to bundle up our whole project. So we can do this by going to our root directory, doing node modules, dot bin webpack and hit enter and if we cd into our disk folder we can see that the files are all there at this point we're going to actually go into our disk directory and we're going to create an index.html file so that we can actually load that bundle.js in i've created a really simple html file here but the only thing of any real interest is this line right here this is where i actually import the bundle.js file which will load that other bundle chunk and it'll also load our wasm file and then it'll run the contents of init.js. All we'll need now is a simple development server to actually run this HTML file. And there is a small issue right now where a lot of the development servers out there, including the Python 2 and 3 ones, do not support the WebAssembly uh, MIME type, which is application slash WASM. So we have to use a specific one I downloaded called WASM serve. So we can access that with dot dot slash node modules dot bin wasm serve. This is a very simple server. It will serve up what we need on port 3000 and it will recognize the wasm file properly and send back the right content type. So we'll bring over in our browser and we will load that URL into the browser. We'll drag our Chrome console over here and check out what's going on. So as you can see, it loaded our bundle.js, our zero.bundle.js, and then it loaded our wasm file here. And you can see down here in the bottom left hand corner, this little 10, this is saying that it actually worked. This is where we console.log the result of our add function, which was, I, I believe, two and an eight. So although this example is very simple and has no real practical use, you can see how significant it is. We were able to add two numbers without writing any JavaScript. In a future video, I do intend on covering a more advanced example. And depending on when you watch this video, that video may actually already exist. If it does exist, I'll put a link in the description. So just real quick, let's recap exactly what we did. I listed everything in the notes.txt file, which will also help you reproduce what I did here if you want to after this video. So we started by installing WASM pack and then we created our own Rust library package. And then we actually wrote the code that we wanted to export to JavaScript. In this case, a single function that added two numbers. We used the WASM pack build function to actually convert our Rust code into a WASM file along with all the files that makes it a legitimate module. After creating our JavaScript file to actually use the exported functions from Rust, we then used Webpack to bundle everything together. We then started a development server using Wasm server, and then we opened up our browser, turned it on, looked at our console, and saw that it did in fact add two numbers and then output the result of the console. Now again, I know it was an extraordinarily simple example, but I hope it demonstrated the potential power of WebAssembly. And that's really all there is to it. This should be enough to give you solid footing to start experimenting with WebAssembly. If you have any questions or comments about anything you saw in this video, please make sure to leave them below in the comments. And other than that, hope to see you in the next video. Take care.